All right, good to be back to practice um, after the bye week. Um, going out there a normal Monday and continue to prepare um, for a great team, as we all know. Um, you know, like I said last week, don't see any holes in this team. You know, and kind of like I said, <clears throat> referred to, you know, with free agency, if they did have them, you know, at receiver or linebacker, they, they filled them. So it'll be very challenging not just to play them, but to play there. And if you think about it, we've really never played in front of a crowd in two years, um, you know, because of COVID uh, to go to a true road game. So that brings challenges on its own. And so we'll have our hands full. I'm sure, it's why we're a huge underdog for a reason. Lane, you've talked a lot in the past about being at Alabama for those Ole Miss upsets in, in 14 and 15. Do you talk about that at all, or kind of what do you say to your team this week about heading into play a number one team? Not at all. That has nothing to do with this. There are no players, no coaches here. Um, maybe Coach Nix, but um, that has nothing to do with this game. Uh, so those are two really big wins by Ole Miss. And, you know, and any time that you go, go play a number one team, especially there, but um, you're going to have to prepare really well. You're going to have to play really well. You're going to have to get some breaks, go your way, you know, to have those type of upsets. And that's why they rarely happen. And you got to have a lot go right. So, you know, maybe we can get one of those passes where the quarterback gets hit and then they drop it and it tips up to us and we go score. I'll call Hugh and ask him what that play was called. Lane, you said uh, last week, you know, talking about the, the open date and everything that uh, maybe it came a little early because you could use it later in the season to get some guys healthy and everything. You also said the health of your team was relatively good. Um, it, it, I guess I'm asking, you know, Jake Springer and, you know, some missing pieces in the past. You feel like they're, everybody's going to be ready to go Saturday. Well, you guys know, I mean, say the same thing all the time. I hope so. Um, I don't think the buy helped us, um, you know, with those issues. So it is what it is. Lane, this run over 15 years or so that Alabama has been on, and obviously you were there for, for, for part of it. From, from your perspective, what do you think has, has led to the staying power that they've had? It's pretty unreal for a team to kind of have this run, especially in this, like you brought up the free agency and, and all that kind of stuff. <clears throat> Nick Saban. I mean, Alabama's been around a long time. They hadn't won like this, you know, for a long time or run one big for a long time. So it's not like it's just a school. It's one person. So he's been able to maintain it through tons of different players, tons of different coaches, more coaching turnover than I bet anybody's ever had. And so it's how it's by the way that he works. Um, and probably more important than anything, the way that he recruits. You know, they got great players. I think last year we played them here and, you know, they had six first rounders. We had two draft picks. So um, he's dominated in recruiting. And now with free agency, he gets to add on to that. And he said it himself when he first asked about, um, you know, free agency that, you know, it was going to make the rich richer. And he was right. Seems weird to ask a crowd question, but you guys didn't play with crowds last year. It wasn't loud, really, any place. You're going to Tuscaloosa, it'll be full, it'll be loud. What are you doing this week to just kind of prepare for that for the first time since you've been here? Uh, just normal crowd noise, you know, like we always have for years. Um, I don't think there's much more than you can do. I think more than the noise itself, I think is just staying in poise when you're in an environment like that, you know, not making mistakes just because of the energy level. Uh, more than the actual crowd noise itself affecting, you know, your actual snap counts and plays. What stands out about uh, Bryce Young and just kind of what makes this Alabama offense work the way it has? Well, he's got great weapons. He gets out of trouble. He's been very accurate, short to midfield. Um, you know, and you can see last week he basically had numbers that are hard to do on air, you know, when you're going against nobody. So... He's picked up really well, and again, there's another coaching change that they've picked up through, and um, you know, by far the number one team in the country.
this is probably more curiosity than anything, but I know you've taken a liking to Saban's rat poison line. I know he said it after you'd left, but was that something that you'd heard from him internally while you were there or just kind of what has led you to liking that piece of wisdom so much? He did not. That was new. Somebody must have given it to him after I left. So um, I just think it's really good, especially the way he explained it. You know, it's like drinking rat, rat poison. And that's pretty good. So I would say Lonnie or Dr. Elko must have given him that one. It's pretty good. I want to take a question at the top of the room. Lane, you mentioned, you know, you guys are going to a hostile environment, everything, crowd noise. Just how much does it help to have a quarterback like uh, Matt, you know, be able to, you know, lead his offense and try to keep everybody uh, composed uh, throughout this game? Well, hopefully it helps a lot. But, again, he's really not done this with us. Um, maybe he did the year before. You know, so, you know, this is a new set of challenges for him too. And all to sort of do rap poison around his success so far and, Talking about Heisman trophies, which is ridiculous at this stage of the year. Like I told the players, it, there's only one ranking that ever matters. That's your final ranking. You know, all the other stuff means nothing. You know, it's like being ahead, you know, three rounds in a heavyweight fight with going 12 rounds. It don't mean anything. So we have a long ways to go and a lot of work to do and a lot of things to work on. All right, we'll take questions on Zoom. This is the first question on Zoom. Please raise your hand. I'll call on you. Unmute yourself. Lane, uh, Eric, how much does, does Nick normally, you were part of this for a while, how much does he prepare or look at SEC opponents during the offseason, <coughs> if at all? And do you think that because of the success you guys had against their defense last year, that, uh, that you got a little bit of preparation for this game? Yeah, I mean, he's a great coach. And so, you know, if you have issues the season before being there with him, you know, especially on that side of the ball, he's going to, you know, spend time studying that and spend time, you know, looking at what to do. And so, you know, we already heard he spent time in the off season and they, you know, worked a lot of drop eight against us. So we're practicing, expecting to see that. Will Bender, go ahead. Yeah, I think in that Florida game, having never played with him, and in that game, you know, they were playing, you know, a lot of the same coverage to formations, and so we're actually drawing things up during the game on the sidelines, and that's hard to execute when you haven't been with people and haven't had reps, and his ability to do that and change on the fly was very impressive. So he continues to get better this year protecting the ball, and that'll be huge again. I think I saw – stat somewhere on TV or something that, you know, the only teams have ever beat them. Uh, Alabama, I think, were zero interceptions, somebody said, or I think I saw that. Parrish, go ahead. I think this falls under the category of rat poison, but is, is there a benefit to the program in any way that uh, – Well, again, for Matt, for this team, none of that means anything, you know, just like the final ranking, you know, being in the top for some Heisman, you know, media talk now means nothing. It only matters if you win the thing. Um, but sure, there's something to that about energy or you go on the road recruiting like this week and, you know, nationally, everybody knows who Matt is. Everybody has, you know watched us and I feel like they know our team uh, more than probably in a long time here. The Monday night game helped, you know, having the spotlight that we did. And so, yeah, there's a lot of energy around, but that can die really quick if you don't keep playing well. Okay, we'll bring it back to the room.
Coach, what can a game like this do for your recruiting efforts, not only for the 2020 class, but beyond? Well, I think if you just look at recruiting and beyond, you know, the most important thing is to play well. Um, you know, even if that's not in a win, you know, again, this is just in the recruiting aspect, you know, so recruits see, okay, hey, we go there, you know, we're close to playing with the number one team. So maybe myself and a couple of kids can be the difference, you know, of taking us there. So I think that that's, you know, from a recruiting standpoint, help. I don't, you've heard me say before, we ain't here to, you know, cover spreads or play close games, um, you know, because that doesn't matter in this room or with the program, but outside in recruiting, yeah, that's, you know, is what it is. Coach, Alabama does a really good job in their secondary disguising coverages. W what do you guys do for this week to prepare, Matt, for that? Um, well, I mean, like every week, whatever they do, you know, we try to simulate. Our service guys have meetings and try to give them the same looks. And again, with us, we never know because it's a little harder to disguise because of our tempo. So <clears throat> we're kind of never sure what people are going to do because a lot of times we get a completely different game plan than what they've shown because we're, we're so different. Lane, we see the big arm and the, the accuracy of Matt Corral and his statistics and what he does every Saturday. What are the intangibles you see in him that make him the quarterback that he is? The things that we don't see just by watching the game. Well, I think that he's here at 5.30 in the morning, you know, every morning in the way that he prepares and, um, you know, comes to meetings, his approach to it, him getting on the players, uh, you know, when they're not doing things right, even defensively. So, you know, really those leadership things, um, you know, when you guys aren't looking. Looked like Florida had a lot of success running the ball against this Alabama defense, and you guys obviously had success doing it last year too. What have you seen on tape that kind of went right for Florida, and what are you guys trying to replicate from that? Well, I, I mean, it wasn't a secret formula. You know, they blocked them well at times, um, you know, made the safeties miss, and, you know, had some good schemes, and the quarterback can run himself. So that's usually the formula against anybody, but especially them. So, you know. We'll take one more stop, Rick. Lane, both, uh, you know, last year's Alabama team, great team. This year's team, another great team. Uh, both in their own right, though, both unique. Just what uh, makes this year's team, you know, special that you've seen from them? I think they're even better. You know, I said last year was a great team. And I think people, you know, I said maybe his best team ever. I think people think I was just saying that leading up to the game. But then you look and. You know, they run the table and not really close games. I think somebody said, you know, in the last two years, only Florida and Ole Miss have scored over 24 points against them. So, you know, and I think they're better on defense. Uh, you know, with the Tennessee linebacker, you know, added in, 31's now older. Um, you know, he's as good as any rusher in the country. So, you know, we'll have our hands full.